Okay then, let's begin our tour of the planets with Mercury. Uh, Mercury is, of course, this planet that sits right here. It's closest to the sun. Um, and the first thing that might pop in your head is, boy, it's got to be hot there being that close to the sun. Um, maybe not necessarily, so let's just get into it. So of Mercury then, of the planets rather, Mercury is a planet of the extremes. For the first thing, first point is it's the smallest in all the solar system. You can just see that very very clearly on the graphic here. It's also the densest. So what that means is the dens that in density here, is remember density is a measure of the mass over volume. So if you try to take some volume like this, or you take some volume, and you pack some matter in there, the question is how much of this mass or matter can you squeeze into a given amount of volume? Well, Mercury has done the most of that of all the planets in the solar system. It is the densest for a reason that I will tell you. It has the oldest surface in the solar system, so I hope you have a number for that after going through the uh, nebular hypothesis. What would you think that age is? Think to yourself now, the oldest surface. Well, I hope the number 4.5 billion years pops up. So Mercury is a relic of the nebular hypothesis. Its surface was formed and shaped and looks the way it does now because of what happened to it four and a half billion years ago. So it's a uh, relic of the nebular hypothesis for sure. Uh, and here's maybe the first surprise about Mercury. It has the largest daily variations in surface temperature. So no, it is not just hot all the time, as we'll see. Uh, and unfortunately for Mercury, it is the least explored. So there's that. Okay, onwards. Here then is a picture of Mercury and the moon. I wonder if you can tell which is which. Well, this is the moon over here. You can usually tell by the maria, which Mercury doesn't have as distinct as the moon, okay? Uh, and here's Mercury right here. So once again, you see a very heavily cratered surface. So Mercury has, of course, craters all over, as does the moon. And in both of these cases, of course, these craters are going to be that age of 4.5 billion years, whether it's the moon or Mercury. All that cratering would, have ha cratering would have happened a long time ago in the era of heavy bombardment. Now, not all of them. There have been some strikes since then, but, you know, by and large, heavy bombardment four and a half billion years ago. And here's a size comparison for you right here. Of course, you know the Earth right there, and that'll be Venus right there, similar in sizes as uh, the Earth. So this is Earth here, and this is Venus. Here's Mars right here. Mars is a relatively small planet. And this is our moon right here that's sort of on the for comparison. So there's Mercury right there. Mercury right there. See, it is a very small planet, at least compared to our moon, or, as we know, we have a very large moon for our Earth. But there's sort of a size comparison for you right there. Another one for you. See, we have a large moon. We really do. There it is again. There's Mercury. Just all spotted with craters. Very old surface. Four and a half billion years old. And in terms of trying to see Mercury, uh, if you want to view it, you certainly can, but it's hard. And I'll tell you why. Because being in this region of the solar system right here, you're always sort of very close to the sun. And of course, as you know, there's never any point of looking at the sun because it's too bright and things tend to get washed out. And so you always have to sort of uh, look for Mercury at sunrise or sunset. And you need either one of these times here because you need the Earth, of course, is where we're living and viewing this from, need the Earth to block the sun, to get it below the horizon. And when that happens, then of course the bright light from the sun is blocked, and now you have a chance of seeing Mercury. And so this is sort of what you'd get here in this middle picture. It's just a graphic at this point. Uh, Mercury and Venus are sort of in this situation here, being close to the sun. We'll talk about Venus in a second, but it's a similar thing. So here's where the sun would be below the horizon, getting all of its brightness blocked. And Mercury, of course, is in its orbit that goes sort of around the sun like this, goes in its orbit, and if you happen to catch everything sort of timing and orientation wise, that Mercury happens to be swinging into one of its maybe outer turning points here in its orbit around the sun, then you have a chance of seeing it. And this of course is what it might may look like in the sky. This would be the moon here, and this would be uh, say Mercury and Venus uh, all at the same time. Uh, so this is what you see, it would just look like a white dot like that, and it would be one of the first things that you would see sort of come out, or be visible anyway, at sunset. First thing to come out, and also at sunrise would be one of the uh, last things to disappear as it goes. So that's sort of the uh, situation there. Again, being close to the sun, you have to get rid of the sun, but be near it. You know, always looking in the direction of the sun in order to see it. 
And here's another picture of it. I think this is one I may have even taken right here back uh, a while ago. So this, of course, is the moon right here. And the bright one here, there's never any denying that. That'll be Venus. And here's Mercury right here. And in this case, it isn't like Mercury is farther from the sun than, uh, than Venus is. That isn't, certainly isn't the way it works. But in this case here, it's sort of a illustration of the graphic that I just showed you that Venus is sort of doing, uh, you know, maybe it's orbit. I don't know. It looks something like this, and Mercury is maybe something like that on its orbit, and we just happen to catch them both in the sky like that. So this was a time where everything lined up just fine, where these orbits are pretty ugly. I'm just going to get rid of them. They're not really helping. I think you've got that point. But the point is that for visualizing it, the sun would have been down here, would have set below the horizon, darkening the sky, so I can see Mercury and Venus like that. And you can tell the sun must be over here, of course, because of the illumination on the way that illumination on the moon is. So it all kind of makes sense. Actually, that's kind of nice, isn't it? Okay. Sort of what I showed you there. And also, Mercury isn't often up very long. You have to be quick about it because as the sun sets, of course, Mercury is going to um, keep setting as well. Uh, Mercury has been seen, of course, making these so-called... Uh, transits in front of the sun so because of this situation here that mercury is sort of orbiting around the sun like this sometimes in the course of its orbit it can move in front of the sun like that and when it does that it blocks some of the sun's light and makes a dark spot like that sort of an eclipse situation but then it goes on like that and so that's sort of what you're seeing here there's the planet mercury right there moving in front of the sun see it's just nowhere in size or shape or anything compared to the sun it's just absolutely tiny compared to the sun here we go here and so this would be uh, well not recently, but fairly recently, 2006, um, as it sort of made a trans its transit across the sun like that. So this little black dot is the planet Mercury transit transiting across the sun, and this is in one of those big-time uh, filters to filter out a lot of the sun's light, and there it goes. Okay? So then I come to this question you're asking you, what is this? And we'll pick that up in the next video.